A group of well-developed pulses as seen from above pulses are peat mounds with a permanently frozen peat and mineral soil core. They are a typical phenomenon in the polar and subpolar zone of discontinuous permafrost. One of their characteristics is having steep slopes that rises above the mire surface. This leads to the accumulation of large amounts of snow around them. The summits of the pulses are free of snow even in winter, because the wind carries the snow and deposits on the slopes and elsewhere on the flat mire surface. Pulses can be up to 150 meters in diameter and can reach a height of 12 meters. Permafrost is found on pulsa mires only in the pulses themselves, and its formation is based on the physical properties of peat. Dry peat is a good insulator, but wet peat conducts heat better, and frozen peat is even better at conducting heat. This means that cold can penetrate deep into the peat layers, and that heat can easily flow from deeper wet layers in winter. Whereas the dry peat on the pulsa surface insulates the frozen core and prevents it from thawing in the summer. This means that pulses can survive in a climate where the mean annual temperature is just below the freezing point. A lith also is a pulsa without peat cover. They exist in a smaller range than pulses, commonly occurring in oceanic climate regimes. However both pulses and lith ulses are relatively small compared to pingos, typically less than 3 meters. Pulses may be initiated in areas of a moor or bog where the winter freezing front penetrates relatively faster than surrounding areas, perhaps due to an unusually thin cover of snow. The lack of thermal insulation provided by thick snow permits much deeper freezing in winter. This ice may then last through the summer with a persistent bump of up to several cm due to frost heave. The elevated surface of a pulsa will tend also to have thinner snow cover, allowing greater winter cooling, while in summer the surface material will dry out and provide thermal insulation. Thus the interior temperature is consistently lower than that of adjacent ground. This contributes to the formation of an ice lens which grows by drawing up surrounding water. The expansion of the ice upon freezing exerts pressure on the surrounding soil, further forcing water out of its pore spaces which then accumulates on and increases the volume of the growing ice lens. A positive feedback loop develops. Changes in surface moisture and vegetation will then be such as to preserve the newly formed permafrost. The overlying soil layer is gradually lifted up by frost heaving. In cross-section, the ice cores of a pulsa show layering, which is caused by the successive winter freezing intervals. The pressing out of water from the pores is not crucial, however, since the boggy soil is water-saturated and thus always provides enough water for ice core growth. Many scientists agree that the development of a pulsa is cyclic where growth continues until a convex form of the pulsa is reached. When this occurs an increasing pressure in the uppermost layer of peat will cause cracks in the peat layer which will result in the sliding of the peat layer toward the sides of the pulsa. As this layer of peat generates an insulating effect the regression of the layer will thereby expose the permafrost in the pulsa and initiate melting. In this case, the melting of the pulsa is a normal part of the cyclic development and, it will be possible for new embryonic pulsa forms to develop in the same area. However, the studies done on pulsa forms has primarily been observing dome pulses in the northern regions. These study areas lie within the core area for pulsa occurrences and therefore are the cyclic development applicable only to dome pulses within in the core area. Pulsa plateaus often lack the convex form which causes cracks in the peat layers and the decay of dome pulses. But in pulsa plateaus, Frost expansion which causes swelling will with time create an uneven surface and increase the possibility for water accumulation on the surface and cause local regression and melting. This process, which causes melting likewise the cracking of the peat layer in dome pulses, is a normal part in the lifespan of pulsa plateaus but are not a part of a cyclic evolvement. Pulses appear to go through a developmental cycle that eventually leads to thawing and collapse. Open cracks that commonly accompany pulsa growth and the water that tends to accumulate around pulses, probably as a result of their weight depressing the adjacent bog surface, are important factors in this process. The fact that pulses in various stages of growth and decay occur together shows that their collapse is not necessarily indicative of climatic change. All that is usually left after a pulsa collapses is a depression surrounded by a rim. The Storflaket peat bog near Abisko in northern Sweden is a permafrost plateau. It shows some signs of collapse such as cracks at its borders one specific type of mire at which pulsa structures appear is called a pulsa mire. But, sometimes the nature type is described as pulsa bogs, however, they both refer to a peaty wetland where pulsa mounds occur. In pulsa mires, pulses which are in different stages of development can appear due to the cyclic development of the structure. Therefore, the collapsed form of the pulses are common in these areas which can be seen as rounded ponds, 
open peat surfaces or low circular rim ridges. The individual pulsa is described as a mound or a larger elevation in peatland with a core of permanently frozen peat and or mineral soil with an uppermost active layer of peat. The landform occurs in areas with discontinuous permafrost. The core of pulsa stays frozen permanently, including summertime, as the peat layer creates an insulating effect. Mostly pulses have an oval or elongated form but different shapes of pulses have been described. In some places, pulsa complexes which consist of several dome-shaped pulses have been found. At other places, another pulsa structure is described. Here several pulsa plateaus have been found which have flatter surfaces and steep edges. Pulsa forms include mounds, moderately straight ridges, and winding ridges. Pulses in Iceland have been described as hump-shaped, dike-shaped, plateau-shaped, ring-shaped, and shield-shaped. Those in Norway have been referred to as pulsa plateaus, esker pulses, string pulses, conical or dome-shaped pulses, and pulsa complexes. Widths are commonly 10 to 30 meters, and lengths 15 to 150 meters. However, lengths of up to 500 meters have been reported for esker-like pulsa ridges running parallel to the gradient of a bog. Heights range from less than 1 meter up to 6 to 7 meters, but can reach about 10 meters at a maximum above the surrounding area. Large forms tend to be considerably less conical than small ones. In places, pulses combine to form complexes several hundred meters in extent. The permafrost core contains ice lenses no thicker than 2 to 3 centimeters, The locally lenses up to almost 40 centimeters thick have been described. During the cyclic development, the pulsa goes through several stages at which the morphology differs. In the initial aggrading stage of development, the pulses have smooth surfaces with no cracks in the peat layer and no visible signs of erosion can be seen. They are often small and dome-shaped and often referred to as embryo pulses. In this stage ice layers are created which are commonly found in the frozen peat core. It has been suggested that these ice layers are created by ice segregation, but it is most certainly buoyancy that is the reason for the formation of the ice layers. Buoyant rise of the core occurs which freezes when the permafrost reaches the area and creates the ice layers. In the stable, mature phase, the surface has risen further to a level at which the snow cover during winter is thinned by the wind which in turn makes it possible for deeper freezing. In the mature stage, the frozen core has reached beyond the peat layer into the underlying silty sediments and during summer thawing of the core occurs but not to an extent where the core thaws completely. The thawing can sometimes create water-filled ponds adjacent to the pulsa and in some cases, cracks in the peat layer along these ponds can be present in the stable stage. However, these cracks are small in size and no visible signs of block erosion are seen during the sable stage. During the degrading stage, however, The pulses have large cracks up to several meters which divide the peat layer into blocks and so-called block erosion occurs. Adjacent to pulses in the degrading stage often several individual ponds are found, due to thawing of the frozen core. Wind erosion often affect the peat layer to such a degree that it decreases in thickness with sometimes several decimeters. When pulsa plateaus are in the degrading stage several ponds on the flat plateau surface can be seen which often have neighboring block erosion. When block erosion occurs the mineral soil is often exposed along the cracks, especially when the peat layer is thin. Anders Rapp's map of the limit of pulses and discontinuous permafrost in Fenisgandia. Pulses are typical forms of the discontinuous permafrost zone regions and are therefore found in subarctic regions of northern Canada and Alaska, Siberia, northern Fenisgandia and Iceland. They are almost exclusively associated with the presence of peat and commonly occur in areas where the winters are long and the snow cover tends to be thin. In some places pulses extend into underlying permafrost, in others they rest on an unfrozen substratum. In the southern hemisphere pulsa remains from the last glacial maximum have been identified on the Argentine side of Isla Grande de Tierra del Fuego just north of Cami Lake. Remainders of Ice Age pulses are to be found also in Hochmern of Central Europe, such as Hohen Van in the German-Belgian border area. Erosion of pulsa forms and the receding of the permafrost in the core of the pulsa does not directly indicate a change in climatic conditions. As the pulses have a cyclic development the thawing of the core is a normal part of the pulsa development. However, change in climatic conditions does affect pulsa forms. The pulsa forms that lay in the outskirt of the occurrence area are more dependent on climatic conditions for existence than the pulsa forms near the core of the occurrence area. A study on pulsa forms was done in 1998 at Davrefjell, in southern Norway. At the time of observation, the mean annual temperature lied just under 0 degrees Celsius in the area. 
These areas are certainly sensitive to changes in temperature, just a small temperature rise can have a great effect on the lasting existence of pulses in the specific region. Measurements from meteorological stations in the area show that the mean annual temperature rose 0. 0.8 degrees Celsius between the time periods of 1901 to 1930 and 1961 to 1990. Since the start of the warming trend in the 1930s, entire pulsa bogs and large pulsa plateaus have completely melted in the Davrafjell area. Pulsa bog sensitivity to changes in temperature makes them a good climate indicator. The study in the Davrafjell area concluded that if pulses are used as climate indicators it is essential to separate large changes in the distribution of permafrost from smaller changes. Smaller changes are caused by shorter climatic variations which only last a few years. Small dome pulses, which also can be called embryo pulses, can develop as a result of smaller variations in climatic conditions such as a few following cold winters. As these small pulses disappear after just a few years, they fail to establish as permanent formations. This phenomenon has been observed in the Davrafjell in the last decades and is caused by a larger change in the climatic condition where the temperature has risen to a level at which the pulses can't fully initiate their cyclic development. This is a consequence of climate change with the warming trend which has been observed in the Davrafjell area. In this area, the climate has not been cold enough for new pulsa forms to establish during the whole of the 20th century. However, some uncertainties of how the local conditions affect the formation of pulsa forms and especially the hydrology of pulsa mires still exist. Additionally, more active layer monitoring and its correlation to local weather conditions is needed to better determine the effect of climate change on pulsa mires. Because the top mounds of the pulses are more dry and nutrient-poor than their wet surroundings, they create a mosaic of microhabitats within the mire. The occurrence of a pulsa is determined by several climatological factors, such as air temperature, precipitation and snow thickness. Therefore, an increase in temperature and precipitation may induce thawing of frozen peat and subsidence of the peat surface. This results in a thicker active layer and wetter conditions. The vegetation, therefore, changes in adaptation to the wetter conditions. The expanding wetness is projected to benefit sphagnum mosses and graminoids, at the expense of the drier pulse of vegetation. The associated changes in greenhouse gases fluxes are increased CO2 uptake and increased methane emission, mainly due to the expansion of tall graminoids. The lasting occurrence of pulsa mires is endangered by several factors. Firstly, one factor is climate change which primarily causes a threat to the pulsa mires located at the outskirts of the habitat distribution. Climate change causes an increase in the average annual temperature, which must lay under 0 degrees Celsius for pulsa forms to exist. Additionally, Climate change also causes a change in precipitation with increasing snowfall in the occurrence area for pulsa mires, which also will have a negative effect on the pulsa mires. Another factor is particles from atmospheric fallout which can influence the hydrochemistry and degradation rate of organic matter. Furthermore, community building and primarily such that have an impact on the hydrology and hydrochemistry can damage the habitat of pulsa mires. But, the impact from this kind of activity is minimal considering the extent of the occurrence area which is relatively large compared to the impacted area. Pulsa mires are a prioritized habitat type in EU species and habitats directive and therefore conservation of pulsa mires within Sweden and Finland is of great interest. Conservation of this habitat can be fulfilled with measures of such kind that they sustain a favorable conservation status and degradation of the pulsa mires are avoided. Another important aspect for the conservation of pulsa mires is a continued work against climate change. But, in 2013 Sweden reported the conservation status for the pulsa mires to be poor and in many areas the pulses have collapsed and there's a high risk for extinction. Many studies report degradation of the habitat type during the last decades with the primary cause for the loss of habitat area being climate change. A typical pulsa mire has a high level of biodiversity ranging from several different types of bird species to tiny organisms like bacteria. This is largely because of particularly due to its outstanding mineralotrophic, ombrotrophic and water table gradients, which enables the presence of several microhabitats distributed in different degrees of wetness. Pulsa mires are listed as a priority habitat type by the European Union, and climate change may pose a great risk to its ecosystems. Although much research has been carried out on degradation of pulsa mires, there is still an enormous information gap on what implications on biodiversity disruptions in ecosystems may have. In fact, there is not much at all known about many organisms inhabiting pulses. 
it is vital to gain more knowledge about the distribution of these organisms, as well as patterns of species richness long-term, in order to understand and predict possible implications of potential loss of pulsa. Without this key knowledge, understanding the biological importance of pulsa Myers is hard to assess. In pulsa Myers zones in northern Europe, abundance of bird species breeding finds at peak. This is particularly true in the case of North European waders. In the northernmost of Finland, pulsa Myers hosts the highest bird species density of all compared to several different biotopes, and there are most. Likely the heterogeneity of habitats and availability of shallow waters that creates such a massive diversity of birds. Due to likely loss of pulsa Myers in this century, effects on wildlife and biodiversity is undeniable. Shallow waters might disappear or decrease dramatically, creating a more homogeneous environment. This will likely have a negative impact on certain species of breeding birds as well as other organisms inhabiting pulsa Myers permanently or seasonally. The available research on ecological effects of pulsa regression is scarce. As many breeding species are not exclusive to pulsa Myers, the question of possible extinction as a result of declining pulsa Myers are yet not certain. It is not a reach though, to suggest that the homogenization of pulsa Myers will bring biological consequences. There are some studies conducted on the ecological factors responsible for species abundance, in which water table depth is a suggested factor. To successfully conduct a comprehensive study on biodiversity effects in this area, much more research is needed to map out a lot of species living in pulsa areas. Both pulsas and pingos are perennial frost mounds, however, pingos are typically larger than pulsas and can reach heights greater than 50 meters, while the highest pulsas rarely exceed 7 to 10 meters. More importantly, pulsas do not have an intrusive ice core, or ice that forms as a result of local groundwater. However, for pingos, the defining characteristic is the presence of intrusive ice throughout most of the core. Pulses form as a result of ice lens accumulation by cryosuction, and pingos as the result of hydraulic pressure if it is open, and hydrostatic pressure if it is closed. Moreover, contrary to pingos which are usually isolated, pulses usually arise in groups with other pulses, such as in a so-called pulsa bog. Unlike pingos, pulses do not require surrounding permafrost to grow, seeing as pulsa are permafrost. Pingos also grow below the active layer, which is the depth that the annual freeze-thaw cycle occurs, and pulses grow in the active layer. Both pulses and pingos result from freezing of water to an ice core. Pulses, however, do not necessarily require positive hydrostatic pressure, since the boggy soil is water-saturated and therefore has sufficient supply for the growing ice core. Pulses can grow laterally to a wide extent forming a pulsa plateau, also known as a permafrost plateau. Pingos do not grow laterally to the same extent because the growth of pingos is chiefly upward, thus they are always hills. Similarly, pulses can laterally decrease in size while maintaining their height, the decay of pingos follows a different pattern. Pulsa is a term from the Finnish language meaning a hummock rising out of a bog with a core of ice, which in turn is a borrowing from northern Sami, balsa. As pulses particularly develop in moorlands, they are therefore also named pulsamores. Bugger and bulginiaks are general terms in the Russian language for both pulses and pingos. Pictures of pulses and further information. Thanks for watching.